today is actually my birthday and I'm just spending my morning drinking some coffee and putting the finishing touches on this video. I have to say I really love the Blender community. There are so many amazing tutorials out there by so many different creators at this point and everyone I've talked to has just been so kind and supportive. Uh, I really feel thankful for all the tutorials I've been able to follow on YouTube and elsewhere and that's really why I make tutorials of my own is just to try to be that guy who helps other people learn fun things in this software. Anyways, uh, this is what the nodes are going to look like for our project today. I'm using Blender 3.5.1, so there are a few changes, including how mixing nodes works. Uh, so if you're not familiar, this version uh, may look a little different at first, it may take some getting used to. I'm going to get rid of the cube and bring in a plane as my backdrop there. I'm going to switch to the materials tab and put that material that was on our cube onto our plane. And I'll also switch to cycles. We can use EV or cycles, it doesn't really matter, but my computer goes faster with cycles. I'll split the screen and change the left side to the shader editor. And we'll work here. I'm just going to rotate this by 90 degrees on the X axis uh, and then just go into rendered mode by holding down Z and moving my mouse upwards. I'll get rid of this uh, principal BSDF for now. We don't really need it. Bring it back in later. I'm going to hit Shift A and search for a gradient node. It's Control Shift left click to get that shortcut of the view there. It's a Node Wrangler shortcut. So if that's not working, just make sure Node Wrangler is enabled in your add ons. I'm going to set the gradient texture to radial. I'm going to hit Control T and that brings up a texture coordinate and mapping node. I'll plug in object into the mapping node. I'm going to bring in a couple math nodes, and the first is set to multiply, and the second I will set to fraction. And uh, let's adjust the multiply so we can kind of see what's going on to it better. If we turn it up to 6, we can see there's 6 sections. And it's kind of going from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. And then I'm going to go subtract 0 0.5, so now it's negative 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5. And then absolute value, now it's 0 to 0.5. And then finally, multiply by 2, and now it's 0 to 1. We can actually illustrate that if we bring in a final math node that's just set to less than. And we can uh, adjust the ranges there to see the thresholds. So I'm going to set this math node to 12, a little higher there. So now we have 12 sections. And I'm going to use this pattern to uh, drive a mapping node here. So I'll bring that in. And we are going to put it into... Uh, the scale at the bottom there. I'm just going to hold down shift and right click and drag through the noodle there to make some reroute points. I'm going to bring in a vector math node and just set it to length. It's going to give me a circle as well. I'll bring in a color ramp. Adjust this color ramp here, put the flag in the middle, and just turn uh, the value quite high there. Not quite to 1, but maybe like 0.85 or 0.9, something in that range. And uh, this mapping node here, I've just got to select the other mapping node and connect it there. So there we go. And now let's see what the output looks like here on the color ramp. If we adjust it, yeah, we're starting to see you know a shape there in the middle. So I'm going to adjust this so that we have, you know, white, black, and then another flag on the other side that's white. So I'll just move that into position here, and then just change the shade. So uh, it's not quite the right shape. We want a more rounded. So I'm going to, you know, take a look at the interpolation here. You know, there's ease, uh, kind of close, but not quite right. There's cardinal, uh, B spline. I actually found works pretty good. Uh, you know, looks looks pretty decent. Uh, I like the look of this. But there's another way we could do it as well, and that's with an RGB curves node. So I'm just going to search for that and uh, bring it in. And let's do something similar. We'll plug it into the color there. And if we raise that top area up to, you know, around 0.89, it's about the same as we did with the other one. And just make another point in the middle there. And then we'll attach that to that noodle there. And you can see the shape there. If we adjust this, actually, we can get some different shapes too, like, you know, this star one here. Um, you know, if maybe if somebody is like shouting in a comic or something like that, um, or an explosion or something like that, you could do that kind of shape. 
I think that would work pretty well. But the uh, speech bubble or the thought bubble is usually round. So I'm just going to adjust it till it's, uh, you know, a shape I like here. And then uh, this last one here, let's just adjust this color ramp. Put one more black flag in here and just tighten it up a little bit to give it some better contrast. And then uh, at the beginning here, let's add a noise texture node and a mix node, which we'll set to color by opening this up and hitting C. And uh, we'll just run object and color into those A and B slots put the result into that mapping node and we'll set the scale to one on the noise and we'll set it to 4D and the factor I'll set to 0.8. The scale on the mapping node, I might play with this a little bit here just to get a better uh, shape, you know, something a bit more horizontally stretched. This looks pretty good, you know, something like this I'm happy with. Maybe if I adjust this a little bit here. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So if I move this W value back and forth, you can see the different iterations with my noise there. Just going to adjust it slightly to give it a, a little bit of a slant here. I'll bring in a color ramp and uh, I'll also bring in a mapping node and I'll set it to multiply and put it on that existing noodle after the length and run that color ramp into there. And uh, let's look at that. It's just kind of warping this thing, but it's warping it way too much. So I'm going to change that shade to something way lighter, way closer to white for that first flag. And uh, you can see what it's doing. It's just a very slight effect, you know, um, I guess, depending on how extreme you have it, but uh, I just thought it looked kind of interesting and kind of comic book-esque as well. And you can adjust uh, another multiply node there as well if you want to get, uh, you know, a varied effect again. So um, just another little bit of uh, complexity, I thought added something. I'll bring in the principled uh, BSDF here and uh, I'll make a second color ramp and I'm going to adjust it here by taking out some of these flags on the right side. So now it's just uh, you know black and white map because the black is going to be the transparency on this BSDF. So we'll plug that into the alpha value and look at the principal BSDF. We'll have to adjust it a little bit because the black outline is missing. So just bring these flags around until you can see that black outline and it uh, looks a little gray. You know what? I should plug this uh, color ramp into the base color as well. And that's better. So I've been working in cycles, but if we wanted to use Eevee, we could. Uh, the thing you have to change is just on the materials tab here, you just scroll down to the bottom and um, I've already changed it. So uh, the blend mode, blend mode and shadow mode, just change them both to alpha hashed or, you know, try one of the other alpha options and that should work for you. So next, I'm going to bring in a gradient node here to make some uh, little circles that kind of lead down to the character who's doing the thoughts. And I'll just change this to the spherical setting and um, move this over a little bit. And I'm going to select a map node and duplicate it with Shift D and then hit Backspace to return it to its default state. And let's take a look at this uh, gradient node here. I'll bring in a color ramp and adjust it so we get um, you know a little circle. Uh, kind of like we did with the first speech bubble with four flags, two black and two white. Make it a bit thicker, I think. Looks, uh, looks better. And um, I'll make a little reroute there with shift and right click and drag. And let's bring in a noise texture just to distort this a little bit here. And I'll bring in a mix and set it to color. And we'll run this into A and B there and just duplicate it and set the second one 
to subtract. And I'll just set up a quick value node math node set up here as well up top. Set it to subtract. And we'll run that into the second slot. Set the top value to 1. And that way, both the factors will add up to 1, basically. So then I'll set this in the middle, like 0.5. And um, maybe set that to 4. We'll, we'll change the sets to uh, 0.8. Looks better. 0.8 for now looks good. This mapping node here, I'll change it all to 4 for the scale. So it's much smaller. And maybe I'll change this flag a little bit as well, make that thicker. Let's um, let's set it up actually so we can see both the flag, pardon me, the uh, little circle and the thought bubble. I'll just bring in a math node and um, I'll set this to add and uh, put these both together. Just see what that looks like. Oh, no, uh, I meant to say multiply. Um, Right, because uh, I guess we want to see two black areas. So if you think about it, black times white equals black. Um, so you get those two black areas shining through. So uh, now we can kind of see the thickness on both of those at once and adjust it a little easier. Then I'll move this around and uh, I'll just put it. Uh, I'll just put it right below the thought bubble and just to the left of it. Then I'm going to grab all three of these nodes here and hit shift. Actually, I'll make a reroute. Then I'll hit uh, shift or control shift D. That makes them uh, stay attached to that noodle behind. I'll do it a second time as well. I'll change these scales to five and then these scales to six. And uh, then let's make it so all of these show through. So I'll, I'll duplicate this multiply and we'll multiply these together. And uh, then I'll adjust this second one here. Looks good. And then another multiply node. And uh, we'll get this third one in here. I'm also going to duplicate that color ramp up top. Uh, because we're going to do something similar here with the alpha value. Um, so we'll do it to the other two as well, just real quick. Take out the two flags on the left for each one of these. And then I'm going to duplicate this math node. Didn't need to do that. And we'll change it to add this time. And... Uh, do it a second time. And uh, a final time as well, because we wanted to add it on to that alpha channel there. So let's see what that looks like. And uh, it looks pretty good. Again, we just had to adjust it so we can see that black outline. So just go to the color ramps, do them one at a time. You can see that black outline on the smaller circles is a little bit too thin. We'll fix that as well in a second here. Just go to these other color ramps and we'll just adjust this a little bit. There's the final one. Or no, let's see. Yeah, that was the final one. There's the middle one. Looks a bit better. And then, uh, you know, we can go to this scale here. Actually, maybe let's change it a little bit to the value as well. Um, 0.89 looks pretty good. And a scale of 3 looks pretty good. Let's change it to 4D. And if we do that, we can cycle through the W get different iterations there. So if we set up a value node here, we run it to both W values on these two noise textures I have set up. We can just uh, put a driver in here 
and just uh, cycle through the different iterations. So I'll just make a reroute there and bring in a math node and set it to snap because I don't want it to be capturing every single frame. I'd rather get like, you know, every other frame or even way less than that. So if I set this to 0.5, it'll only change once that value has moved 0.5. So over the course of one, it'll only change twice. And so if I go, uh, you know, hashtag frame divided by 10, it puts a driver in there. And then if I hit spacebar, it'll just automatically start playing. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions about how to change stuff around, please let me know. I enjoy discussing this stuff and answering questions. Thanks a lot for watching.